Okay, welcome to this Unit 1 uh, presentation video um, for the WJC Year 11 Physics. Um, this Unit 1 is both in the double award and in separate science, um, and we will hopefully cover distance, speed and acceleration. So, what are we going to cover in this video? So, key things we're going to look at here is going to look at scalars and vectors. We're going to then talk about motion using the terms distance, displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration. Hopefully you'll be able to describe motion that's been represented by a speed or velocity time graph and a distance or displacement time graph. And then finally, hopefully be able to calculate distance travelled, speed or velocity and acceleration from graphs and from given data. Um, this topic, like I said, um, underpins an awful lot of what we're going to do this year, uh, or within this. Um, and hopefully you've watched the introduction video of how to use these presentations and videos effectively. Okay, just one side note. If you're following the WJC spec um, and you have the specification in front of you, you'll notice I've not spoken anything about cars um, and stopping distances is mentioned in this topic. Um, However, I'm leaving these out for now and I'll come back to these when I've done energy later on. Um, just because it makes a lot more sense to be able to talk about cars when you've done um, some stuff on energy because the two link together. Okay, so on this slide are a series of helpful links. Um, like I've said in the introduction video, if you're watching this on YouTube, these will be in the um, in the description below um, and these are all mo or most of my YouTube videos that are going to help with what's on here um, sometimes a different voice is is brilliant for these um, and all these channels are fantastic okay so on to the first bit of, of proper content so scalars and vectors um, now this is something that's uh, a key difference between um, sort of GCSE before GCSE and then A-level work is how we deal with scalars and vectors. Um, so the key thing to remember is scalars have magnitude only. Now, magnitude is just a posh word for size. Um, so a quantity that only has a size is a scalar. So for example, temperature, time, they don't have a direction. You can't say it was 10 degrees Celsius up that doesn't make sense, or it went one second to the left, that doesn't make sense at all. However, a vector quantity will have both magnitude and a direction. So we're talking here about having size, and we care about which direction that's going in. So for example, velocity is a vector. Speed would be a scalar, so you're going 10 miles an hour, that's a scalar. But if you go, I'm going 10 miles an hour north, or 10 miles an hour left, or 10 miles an hour up, then we're talking about a vector. Now, for GCSE, at least WJC GCSE, we only ever deal with one dimensional vectors. So this means we'll only ever deal with a quantity going up or down, left or right. Um, we won't deal with two dimensions until uh, A level. So for us, that makes it dead simple. We represent vectors and the direction of a vector with a sign, so plus or minus. OK, so it might be that you um, say that um, going this way is a positive direction and that going that way is a negative direction. Or you might say that going down is a positive direction and going up is a negative direction. Now, it's all arbitrary. You can decide which way is which. It does not matter. The only thing I would say is that um, certain questions lend themselves to certain directions being positive. Generally, whichever is going to give you the bigger numbers tend to go for the positive direction, um, unless a question states. Sometimes it will be stated in a question. Um, so, for example, it could talk about um, a ball being dropped and then you see a graph that's got positive velocities. Well, if it's got positive velocities and the ball's being dropped, 
then you hopefully realise that the positive direction there is, is falling. Um, that's a classic trap that's caught many students out. Okay, so some key examples of these scalars and vectors then. So, um, and important to know the comparisons sort of between the two. Okay, so we talk about for a scalar being distance travelled. Um, we talk about for a vector being displacement. Um, speed and velocity I've just spoke about. Now, acceleration and force, they don't have a scalar quantity. Both, all, pretty much all the time we talk about acceleration and we talk about force, we'll be talking about the vector for. So we care about the direction of those things. All right, and like it says here, unless direction is important, generally you'll see the word speed and velocity used interchangeably. The minute direction becomes important, then we've obviously got to use the correct terms. Um, one example I like to talk to my students about, um, and it's applicable now, now it's when I'm recording this in the middle of the Tokyo Olympics, um, is a 400 metre race. If you run 400 metres on the inside lane of a track, then your distance travelled will be 400 metres. But your displacement, where we care about the direction, will be zero. Because you've gone, although you've travelled 400 metres round, you've ended up back where you started, your displacement will be zero. Which means that your average speed will be a value, um, but your average velocity will be zero, because your displacement is zero. Okay, now, combining vectors. Um, you will be asked to combine vectors, but like I said, only in one dimension for now. So if vectors are going in, well, as it says here, the opposite direction, we subtract them. So if we've got a 6 and a 5 in opposite directions, we end up with a 1. If they're going in the same direction, then we add them. So here the 6 and the 5 add together to give us 11. All right. Now, if they're going, if we do end up with a diagram that has vectors at right angles, re vectors at right angles to each other don't affect each other which is why we can simplify a lot of things down to just one dimension. We deal with one dimension, then we deal with the other dimension, um, and that will do us for GCSE. Okay, there's an awful lot on this slide, um, so you're going to have to read through it. Um, but a lot of it is just repeated, whether we're talking about speed or velocity. Now, key thing to know with this is that speed and velocity are just a distance or a displacement divided by time. The way to think about this is speed and velocity is how far you have gone in a given time. And so this then gives us our units, gives us our units that if you've measured your distance in metres and your time in seconds, then your speed or velocity unit will be metres per second. If you've measured in kilometres and hours, you'll have kilometres per hour. Now, if in a question you see MPH, generally that means miles per hour. If you see an M slash anything, it will be metres. Another way to tell is basically, are you asked to do anything with that number? If you're asked to calculate anything with that number, it will generally be in metres per second anyway, um, or it will be in metres. The WJC do not expect you to convert from, uh, from metres into miles or vice versa um, without using a graph. So there's a couple of questions where they've asked it using a graph. Um, they've given you a graph of miles per hour and metres per second and asked you to read off that to work it out. Um, but otherwise, they won't ask you to convert between the two. Now, acceleration is rate of uh, change of speed or velocity. Now, Whenever we see the word rate in science, rate just means divide by time. So you might think of speed as rate of change of displacement or rate of change of, of distance travelled. So acceleration is rate of change of speed, which means that the equation for acceleration is change in speed divided by change in time. What this means is the units for acceleration will be your units for speed divided by time. So if you've measured speed in metres per second, then you'll have metres per second per second, or metres per second squared. All right. Now, there are times when objects can accelerate, but not change their speed. Because remember, acceleration is a vector. 
All right. So if you have a change in velocity because you've changed direction, you can still accelerate, but you haven't changed your speed. Your actual distance travelled divided by time is the same, but you're just going in a different direction. So if you've ever asked that, how can acceleration change, but speed doesn't, is because you've changed direction. And acceleration is velocity, a uh, change in velocity divided by change in time. Okay, so on to our first graphs that we're talking about. Distance time graphs or displacement time graphs. Um, here, this would technically be a displacement time graph um, because we have a line going downwards. Um, because of this line here, this actually makes this a displacement time graph. Um, if we don't have that line, then it will only be a, um, a distance time graph um, because we care about direction here. The key things to know about this is that any straight line means that we are traveling at constant speed. If it's a horizontal line, then it means that we're stationary. Curved lines are acceleration. The steeper the line, the faster the speed. Because as we say here, the gradient is the speed or velocity if we care about direction. Now, distance time graphs are OK, but they don't really tell us very much, which is why we have velocity time graphs or speed time graphs. Again, this is a velocity time graph because we've got negative values on it. If we've only got positive values, it could be a speed time graph. Now, these are a lot more involved, and not all the stuff that is on here is on both higher and foundation. Um, what's on here for everyone? You need to be able to, to uh, tell the key shapes. So straight lines here are constant acceleration. Horizontal lines are constant speed. Curved lines means that your acceleration is changing. Lines below the axis means we're going backwards. Um, as well. The only time we're stationary is if we have a horizontal line on the x-axis. The gradient of each of these lines is the acceleration. Okay, so the steepness of a line is the acceleration. Now the higher tier thing that is on here is that the area, see this blue bit here, the area under this curve is the distance you travel because it's velocity times time which is distance travelled. Okay, so you could be asked to work out to estimate the distance travelled. Um, in this example, it'd be quite tricky because we've got curves, um, but generally if you're asked to do that, they will only ever be straight lines. So to work out your distance travelled, you break it down into rectang rectangles and triangles, and you work out the areas of each of them using the values on the axis. And we'll have a look at that when we look at some questions later on. Ah, here we go. Working out distance travelled. So, here I'm just showing a simplified graph, and this is how I would have split it up into the different shapes. So first, I make my big blue rectangle in the middle. I then have uh, a triangle on the left-hand side, triangle on the right-hand side, that triangle on the right-hand side, I split up into a rectangle and two triangles. And then I can work out the areas of each of these shapes. Um, if you know your trapezium rule from um, maths, use trapeziums. If you want, you could have split this shape up into probably one, two, three trapeziums and a triangle, if you, if you know how to do trapeziums. Both would be fine. Um, you can just count squares. If you really want to, just count the squares. It can take a long time, that method, because squares can be quite small, but work out what the value of one square is. Count the squares. That's another valid way of doing it. But like I said, this skill will only ever be on higher tier papers. OK, um, so I just want to talk about the difference sometimes between displacement and distance travel. So here's a yo-yo. And this software is called Tracker. It's freely down. Uh, I mean, you can download it for free, um, and you can upload videos, and you can get it to do all sorts. Brilliant software. Um, now here, the top graph is displacement, and you can see that as the yo-yo goes up and down, 
then the displacement goes up and down. Now, there's a, a general trend in this of, go, of sloping upwards um, because yo-yos don't, strictly speak, speaking, just go up and down. Obviously, your hand pulls them up and down, so that screws from these. Now, the bottom graph is distance travelled. Now, it doesn't matter here whether the yo-yo goes up or down. That value keeps increasing. Um, so I've seen questions asked sometimes when they talk about what's the difference between these. But not always using yo-yos. Okay, here, velocity then. Velocity versus speed. Um, the key thing to notice here is that the bottom graph, which is speed, um, is always above the x-axis. Um, and the top graph, if you've noticed that zero is about half, well, not quite halfway. Zero is here on this axis. So you can see here that we have some values below, some values above, values below, value above. Whereas on this one, the value is always above. So just take care with that. Okay, now this is a topic where I was talking about there were no uh, exam questions based just on this topic. Um, a lot of the questions on this topic uh, want to tie into Newton's laws or car safety. Um, so therefore, they tie a lot of distance time graphs into and velocity time graphs into other things. So rather than have questions with lots of stuff that you can't do, um, decided basically just to um, not put this in. OK, so thanks for watching. Hopefully it's been useful and I'll see you in unit two. OK, so uh, well done for making it to the end. Uh, thanks for watching it. Uh, I know some of these are pretty long. Um, and like I said, if they help, leave us a comment. If they don't help, leave a comment. If you'd rather the review bits, which make them really long, I'll put in separate videos. Again, let me know. It's not a difficult job to do. And I can put them in separate videos rather than putting them in the main video and it will make basically two shorter videos um please like please subscribe um and hopefully they they help with your qualifications